Well, if we had 12,000 units that were produced, now that we have broken that, this out into a contribution margin income statement, we could simply take the 12,000 times the sales per unit, 10, 120. We could take the 12,000 times, obviously, one the direct labor is 12,000 times 1.5, 1 1.5, 5, and that'll give us the 18, and so on and so forth. Breaking out all these numbers to get to uh, the total variable cost contribution margin, the 120 minus the 57.6 gives us the 62.4 contribution margin. Fixed costs, once again, are the same. They're fixed. And then if you subtract that out, we, we would have the income from operations 18.3. And of course, again, we could do this for any type of level of units. That's why it's flexible. So this flexibility then, really uh, helpful for us, one, to plan the budget. It's really helpful for us to use this contribution income statement to plan the budget, go through what if type of analysis, because uh, you'll note that this, that if we did this to a master budget type format with a traditional income statement, and we changed the level of production, it would be a lot more difficult for us to go through the income statement and kind of figure out what the change in net income will be. If we break them out by behavior, it will be much more easy uh, to do so. The other thing that's really nice about this is that once we have gone through the actual time period, we can make a comparison of apples to apples or the same thing to the same thing. So in other words, if we basically thought or had our main flexible budget, our main budget at 10,000, and we actually produced 12,000, then we could say, okay, let's take our 12,000 budgeted, flexible budgeted numbers, compare them to the actual results. And then we're comparing something that's budgeted based on the same number of units as actually were produced. And that variance then will be something that we can use easier to use. So in other words, 